Hello and welcome to Unnamed Cocktail Show, a cocktail show for people who want to learn how to drink better. Today we're going to be continuing a series on the six core cocktails that form the foundation for the current cocktail library. By making slight adjustments to any of these six recipes, we're able to create new drinks and revamp the classics. The idea for the series came after reading The Cocktail Codex, which is the second book from Death and Company, an amazing New York cocktail bar. If you're interested in the theories described, you should definitely get a copy. There is way more in, the, in here than I could ever make videos about, and I'm mostly going to focus on the core six. Today, we're making drink number three, the daiquiri. The daiquiri marks our first cocktail that moves away from primarily spirit and starts to introduce other components like sugar and citrus. Like most cocktails, the origins of the daiquiri are vague and storied. By most accounts, the daiquiri was first made in the late 1800s in Cuba and was introduced to the New York cocktail scene in the early 1900s. This is a deceptively simple drink that ends up absolutely delicious and leaves open the opportunity to change aspects and truly create some unique and interesting cocktails. The core of the daiquiri, liquor, sweetener, and citrus, lends itself well to changes, giving us everything from sours to drinks in the tiki family. It also allows us to play around with rum varieties and see how they impact the final drink. You can use white or spiced rums, or you can even make the jump to cachaça. Cachaça is a sugarcane-based spirit, as is rum. However, cachaça is a location-locked spirit, much like scotch or true champagne. This means that the only place able to produce cachaça is Brazil, where it is perhaps the most popular spirit nationwide. While most commonly used in a caporinha, Cachaça is just as versatile as rum and can be used in its place in virtually any recipe. For my recipe, however, I'll be using Kilo Kai. This is a very nice spiced rum from Curaçao with notes of honey and cinnamon. I like the balance this provides, giving a great depth of flavor to the daiquiri while still tr staying true to the origin. It's a higher quality spiced rum than many of us are used to, and this could easily be sipped on its own. So let's get into it. First things first, you're going to want to chill down your glass. I am using a coupe glass because it is the traditional glass for a daiquiri. Put some ice in your glass, pour in some water, and leave that to chill down while you make your cocktail. I'm tossing in a couple of ice cubes to get started. Now remember, when you're using a shaker tin, you always want to add to the smaller of the two tins. That way you know your ingredients will fit when you flip it over. Now, into that small tin, we're going to add two ounces of your chosen rum. Remember, this can be any rum. White rum is probably the most traditional option, but it's always fun to play around a little bit with the classics. To that, we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. You can change this proportion a little bit. Citrus juices can be inconsistent, so feel free to adjust to taste. Now, this is my house-made simple syrup, which is a two to one ratio of sugar to water. So I'm gonna use half an ounce. If you're using a one to one or a store-bought simple, I would up this measurement to about three quarters of an ounce. All right, now take your large tin and line it up on top of your smaller, give it a hit to lock, and then we're gonna shake. Remember the main goal when shaking is to throw the ice all the way back and forth across the tin. This is going to aerate your drink, it's going to chill your drink, and it's going to dilute your drink. Those are the three main goals of shaking. You don't need to get super fancy, you can if you want to. You can see after shaking how the tin is chilled down and formed some condensation on the outside here. So you smack the side of your tin to unlock and then the top pops right off. Next uh, we grab our glass that's been chilling down and pour out that water and ice combination. Now we're going to grab our hawthorn strainer and our fine tea strainer. The reason we double strain shaken drinks is twofold. Typically, these drinks have things in them that we don't want to end up in our final cocktails, such as citrus pulp, egg white, etc. Double straining also allows us to catch the small chips of ice that are produced when shaking 
that would ultimately over dilute our drink. Now, all you have to do is garnish with a lime wedge, and there is your classic daiquiri. Enjoy, and be sure to keep checking back for more recipes.